Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Elder Nathaniel, and to my right, Deacon Asaph. Today's topic, we're going to deal with the ancient holiday of Halloween. But before we get into that topic, let's open up with John 8, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, black woman, Latin man, and Latin woman, if you want to be set free, you must believe the truth of this Bible, that you're the Israelites, and Christ came and died for you, only you, and is coming to return to deliver you from the hands of your captors. So, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 32, okay? Now, a lot of you at home, you celebrate Halloween, they say, oh, it's for the children. Oh, it's just trick-or-treating. There's nothing evil or malicious about it. But what we found out about black men and black women is that you hate to read. A lot of you, they got an old slogan in the United States, if you want to hide anything from a black man or black woman, put it yeah. in a book. Because you hate to read. Okay? So when you examine Halloween, where does that come from? What does the word hallow mean? Like in the Lord's Prayer. Um, Our Father which art in heaven, hallow be thy name. The term hallow, what does it mean? It means holy. So when you celebrate on October 31st, Halloween, holy ween. The word ween that refers to Eve. Eve of what? What holy Eve are they referring to? Okay. Now, when you examine Halloween, now you know what they call it today in school. They try to be clever because many people, as we're waking up in this truth, we're sending letters, we're sending notes saying our children are not supposed to be celebrating Halloween. The white man goes, oh, it's, we're calling it career day. Career day, they're calling it. Now, that's still another clever way of celebrating. And it's done on October 31st, same day. The devil white man, okay? Now, when you examine Halloween, it was a Celtic holiday celebrated during the time of the Middle Ages, and it was brought all the way up till today. They've made slight changes to it, but the root of it all is still evil, still demonic. Understand that, brothers and sisters. Okay? Um, Halloween was in honor of the Lord of the Dead. The Lord of the Dead's name was Sam Hain. Okay, that's what the Celtic Druids called him, Sam Hain. Okay? It was also in honor of um, nature. Okay, and they have something called today Mother Nature. That's why on October 31st it was the end of what um, season? Autumn. Okay, over in the United Kingdom they called it uh, Autumn's Rite. Okay, in Mexico this holiday is called All Souls Day or uh, Day of the Dead. Okay, I'm gonna show you some pictures on that real quick. Bear with me a second. When you, there's a book called Mexico Feast and Ferment, okay, by Tom Owen Edmonds. And they show you this, the way the Mexicans, which is the tribe of Issachar, how they honored this, and this is an Olmec head here, okay, how they honored Halloween, but they didn't call it Halloween, they call it All Souls Day, okay, or the Day of the Dead, which is stemmed from the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, you had the Druid priests in Ireland, Scotland, and England. You ever notice in England, they got Stonehenge. Okay, you had the Druid priests in England sacrifice people to Samhain, to their demonic gods. All right? The Catholic Church, as I said, celebrated All Saints Day. In Mexico, it's called All Souls Day or Day of the Dead. Latin America, also. United Kingdom, is called Autumn Rite. But it was the beginning of the Celtic New Year. October 31st was the beginning of the New Year for the Druids, those that worship Satan. Okay? The symbols of Halloween, many of you may be familiar with. You got your jack-o'-lantern. Okay, we're going to go into that. You got your witch with her broomstick, the black cat. And you got the famous trick-or-treat slogan. Where does it come from? And why do your children dress up? as goblins, ghouls, superheroes, or whatever. Where does it all come from, okay? Um, let's go to Deuteronomy 32, verse 17. You got verse 17? Yep. Read that for us. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 17. 
They sacrifice unto devils. They sacrifice unto devils. Now, who's Moses speaking to? The Israelites. He's prophesying about the Israelites going into captivity and celebrating wickedness. Read it again. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up. To new gods that came newly up. Where did you so-called blacks and Latinos get the celebrating of Halloween from? Holy Ween or Holy Eve. Where'd you get that from? That's a new celebration, a new god of Sam Hain. A lot of you are so ignorant you don't even want to sit down and examine things. Go ahead. Was that it? No. Go ahead. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Whom your fathers feared not. Because none of our forefathers, I'll challenge any of you. Show me where God commanded our forefathers to celebrate Halloween. Where he commanded us to go around, knock door to door, saying, trick or treat, give me something good to eat. Where, did, is that in the Bible? Because a lot of you phony black and Latino Christians, that's what you do. You send your children door to door, knocking on the door, and say, trick or treat. Okay. So now, what is the history behind trick or treat okay first let's get with the witch the witch with the you have, she got a, always a big nose she got the black hat it's a a, a, a big pointed hat it's called a, a cone the cone of power the pinnacle of power that's what her black hat represents the bigger the cone of her head the more powerful that witch is Today they show you a witch and she looks like a cartoon character and they put funny music behind it. So you go, oh, isn't that cute? Like that movie, the show they got on, Charmed, where you got three witches right. and they're like superheroes. Then you, what's that one with Raven Simone, where she's a psychic? That's so Raven. That's so Raven. We're going to go into the biblical teachings on all of that. Okay? History behind Trick or Treat. Go, to, go from there. Go to, what's the next scripture I want you to go to? Go to Isaiah 29, verse 15. Isaiah 29, verse 15. Watch this. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from woe the un Lord. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Go ahead. And their works are in the dark. Now, who is this talking about? Their works are in the dark. This is talking about the so-called white man. Because when the Israelites were enslaved during the 14, 15, 16, 17, 1800s, the white man was bringing all these holidays from England and all over the world. And the Israelites couldn't say anything against it because they did not allow us to read or write and they had us in hard bondage and oppression. Come on. And they say, who seeth us? Who seeth us? Who going to know we did this? Go ahead. And who knoweth us? And who knoweth us? Because a lot of you think the white man is the, 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 the hunk of the world, the most righteous man in the world, and none of you realize that he is the man that enslaved God's chosen people. He is the man that introduced all these demonic holid holidays that you celebrate to this country. Come on. Surely you're turning of things upside down. Surely you're turning of things upside down. What did they turn upside down? The truth of the Bible. All of the, for example, all of the holidays of God, they say, no, 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 you don't got to celebrate that. We have our own holidays for dumb blacks and Hispanics to celebrate. And you poor white trash too. Go ahead. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Why does it mean, what does it mean esteemed as the potter's clay? Potter's clay, what can you do with it? You can shape it and form it any way you want. So God says all that they've done shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. God is going to change it to its proper way. We're going to come back and re reverence the Lord and celebrate his holidays, not the holidays set up by America. Go ahead. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Because when this white man introduced all these false holidays, they, don't, they say, no, God didn't make me. God didn't have nothing to do with me. We do what we want to do. All we want down to 16. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. Yeah, they say God had no understanding, so we got to do it better. We got to do it right. Was that down to 16? Yeah. Good. Okay, now, let's get back to the history of Halloween. The pumpkin, where'd that come from? You see the jack-o'-lantern with the candle in the middle? It still all goes back to the dru druid priests of England, Scotland, and Ireland. So what happened? What's the his history behind it? These druids in the dead of night would walk around and knock on the doors. And what would they say? Trick or treat. Okay? Now, the trick was that they, when they visited a house, they required what? 
a virgin to be sacrificed for the blessing of crops. Okay, that's the treat. Okay, but what would happen if you didn't want to hand over your virgin in the house, which would be your young girl? Or might it could have been a male, someone who had not in, uh, uh, been sexually active or ever had sex. Okay, so what would be the treat behind it? Okay, the trick, the treat. I don't say trick or treat. The trick behind it is that they would light, they would have a carved pumpkin in the face with a face on it. Inside, they would have a mound of burning flesh. Leave it at your door and return by sunrise, okay? They would paint a red pentagram on your house so everybody knew you did not give them the treat and you had until morning, sunrise, to hand over a virgin. And if you did not, all the heads of the house were sacrificed. To, demo, to demonic activity to Sam Hain. That's where the expression trick or treat comes from. Understand that. Okay? So now, they will leave that uh, uh, call from Go to Leviticus 18 and 1. I'm sorry. Because they wanted a virgin to be sacrificed. And if you did not hand over that virgin child, okay, they would kill the elders, the leaders of the house, the heads of the house. Watch this. Leviticus 18 verse 21. Come on. Leviticus 18, verse 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. And thou shalt not let any of your seed pass through the fire to Molech. What, what, what was God talking about here? Because the Israelites were picked, they, he didn't want them to pick up the Canaanite custom of sacrificing children to false gods. Read that again. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of God. I am the Lord. Right. So the Most High did not want us following the custom of sacrificing our children to false gods. That The Druid priests during the Middle Ages, they were doing it all the way up to today. During slave times, it was going on. Where the Ku Klux Klan and all that would go and take children out. What day primarily? October 31st. Take your young sons and young daughters and sacrifice them. You ever notice on that day... There's a slew of children disappearing, okay? You see animals disappearing, why? Because they would sacrifice animals too, to Sam Hain, to these false gods. Understand that, okay? So, go ahead. The pet stores, right. even, they don't let you get black cats around that time of the year, the week exactly. before. Exactly, and you know what? These, these, it's turned into a custom where many people would dress up in these costumes. They would dress up like goblins and ghouls and monsters, why? to ward off evil spirits because by you dressing up in those outfits, those costumes, what did it represent? That you gave homage, homage to those false gods and demons and wanted their protection and not harm. Okay, understand that. But I know you right now go, well, little Johnny doesn't dress up as a goblin or ghoul. My little Johnny dresses up as Superman or Green Lantern. I'm going to show you something, okay? I'm going to show you in this clip here called Justice League, The New Frontier, where all these, the origin behind all these superheroes come from. The ancient gods of Greece and Rome and Egypt still exist. Only today they wear spandex and capes. They come from ancient gods, all of them, ancient false gods, which were really demons. Understand that. But you dress little Johnny up as the Flash, Spider-Man, Batman, okay? So, <laughs> watch this. From there, let's go to uh, Exodus 22 and verse 18. Exodus 22 and verse 18. Exodus chapter 22, verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. The Bible says thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. So little Gloria, little Julie likes to dress up as a witch. And some of you really practice witchcraft because on Halloween, a lot of witch, witch covens come out. People, they call it Wicca. The Wicca, what do they call that thing? Yeah, the, the Wicker. The Wickers, okay? Where they celebrate our worship of Satan. Okay, the Bible said what? Read that again. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Thou shalt not suffer. The word suffer means allow a witch to live. That's God's law on witchcraft. 
Okay? From there, Deuteronomy 18, let's read verse 10 through 12. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. That's still going with child sacrifice, okay? Which a lot of it is done on Halloween. Come on. Or uses divination. Or uses divination. This is going into witchcraft now. Or an observer of times. What's an observer of times? You and your horoscopes. All that deals around Halloween and is kept throughout the year, especially with that horoscope. What's your sign? Oh, I'm a Capricorn. They got a song. My name is Larry. And I'm a... Uh, cancer. I'm My a name can is Larry. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> cancer. All of that. And you black men and black women, black men and black women, follow that foolishness. That's an observer of times. Go ahead. Or an enchanter. Or an enchanter. Which is the warlocks. Or a witch. Or a witch. Or a charmer. Or a charmer. I like to show charmed. Or a consultant. And you know what? That charmer, they, they, they give you a rabbit's foot and say, this is your lucky charm. Hear the word charm. That foot didn't do the rabbit any good. <laughs> so what good do you think it's going to do to you? Okay, the rabbit was put to death and you carrying the lucky rabbit's foot going to get put to death. Come on. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. What's a consulter with familiar spirits? Anybody saw the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze and Whoopi Goldberg? Whoopi Goldberg was a witch. She had the spirit of a, what was that term? Or what? Or a consulter with familiar spirits. She had a familiar spirit. What does that term mean? Meaning she would have the, a familiar spirit, a spirit that's familiar with you. For example, if your aunt died, the aunt of your the spirit of your aunt would inhabit Whoopi Goldberg's character and she would be able to speak through Whoopi Goldberg and communicate with you, okay? So any of your dead relatives will come back through and inhabit her body and be familiar to you and speak through you. Like they got this new show called Ghost Whisperer or another one called Medium. Okay, so read that. What verse you at? Still in 11. Go ahead. Or a wizard... Or a necromancer. Necromancer dealing with the dead. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. All that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. What verse was that? 12. That was it? All yeah. I wanted down to 12. So now, from there, let's go to 1 Samuel 28. Okay, 1 Samuel 28. We're going to start at verse 7. So a lot of you, now some of you might think, oh yeah, that's not real. Some of these witches and all that, some of that stuff is real. Okay, meaning what? There is some spiritual force behind these witches, these enchanters, the observer of times, those with familiar spirits. Some of them are charlatans. Should they call them charlatans? Charlatan. Charlatan, meaning fakes. But there's always that one out of the 50 or 100, that's the real deal. And that's what the Most High was saying, don't deal with that. First Samuel 28, let's start at verse 7. We're going to read down to 20. Verse Samuel 28, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then said Saul unto his servant. Now Saul was the, the first king of Israel. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay? So now what you read about in his history, he had an evil eye towards King David. Okay? Wanted to kill David. And it says God removed his Holy Spirit from him. Because you brothers and sisters, if you can't get your life right according to the laws of the Most High, the Most High will take his Holy Spirit from you and an evil spirit will inhabit your mind. Come on, read it again. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit in Endor. Mm -hmm. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. So now Saul realized the Most High wasn't dealing with him no more. So he told his servants, go find me a woman who has a familiar spirit. Meaning she has the type of spirit that can summon other spirits that's familiar to the person who's speaking to her. Come on. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee. Divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring him up, whom I shall name unto thee. Come on. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirit. So the woman says to disguise King Saul, she says, You know what Saul has done? He has cut off all the people who, who are practicing witches. Why? Because at one time, Saul was trying his best to obey the law. He was getting rid of all the witches, warlocks, and enchanters, and those with familiar spirits. But this woman was left. Come up. 
how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul sware to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Mm. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? So she says, Okay, whom shall I bring, who shall I summon for you? Go ahead. And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Bring me up Samuel, the prophet Samuel. Come on. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. So now the woman is looking through the spirit and she sees the spirit of Samuel and she screams loud. Come on. And the woman spake to Saul saying, why hast thou deceived me? Why? Why did she say, why hast thou deceived me? Because when she saw Samuel, the spirit mind opened up. All the, you can't disguise in a spirit world. Everything becomes plain. Okay. As if sun has shone on everything. So she realized this was King Saul and he has deceived me. Go ahead. For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, Listen good. I saw God descending out of the earth. I saw God descending out of the earth. Meaning, she saw the spirits of the prophets rising from the earth. Come on. And he said unto her, What form is here? And what form is it? So when it says God's, there's another scripture in Psalms where the Lord says to the Israelites, ye are God's. Okay, so that's what this whip see when she says, I saw God's rising up from the earth. She saw the spirits, the souls of the Israelites who had died, who had died and being uh, taken up before the Lord. Come on. And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God descending out of the earth. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up and he is covered with a mantle. He has a, a covering and he has a cape. That's what a mantle is. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel because he remembered that Samuel used to always dress with a mantle, meaning a cape that had a hood. Come on. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me? You see what the spirit of Samuel said to Saul? Why have you disquieted me? This is what he said in the spirit to Saul. Go ahead. To bring me up. And Saul answered, I am so distressed for the Philistines make war against me. So what is this proving? That this witch was, a, was real. She dealt in demonic activity. Okay? Like some of you at home that deal with Eligua or Shango. Okay? Or Brujaria or Santeria. Some of that is real. Okay? And the Most High has warned each and every one of us not to deal in witchcraft. Come up. I am so distressed for the Philistines make war against me. And God has departed from me. So he's trying, still trying to make it seem like I'm trying to do the right thing. But God ain't dealing with me, Samuel. Can you help me? Realizing that the Lord has left him. Come on. And answereth me no more. Mm -hmm. Neither by prophets nor by dreams. Come on. Therefore I have called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, wherefore then thou ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from thee. So Samuel says, what you asking me for? If the Lord has departed from you, why are you coming to me? A servant of the Most High God. Come up. And has become thine enemy. And the Lord has become your enemy. Come up. And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Now Samuel's letting him know why the Lord has left you. Because you have hated your brother David, God has given a kingdom to David. You have not done the commandments of the Lord, and you have not cut off the Amalekites, which are Edomites, which Saul was commanded to do. He did not fulfill it. Come on. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. Mm. And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord, so what was he telling him? When Samuel said, the Lord will deliver you and the Israelites into the hands of the Philistines and you shall be with me tomorrow, what was Samuel telling Saul? You shall die. You shall be put to death tomorrow. Go ahead. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. What verse you at? 19. Go ahead. Oh, he went down is 20. Then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth and was so afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all day nor all night. So now, he, he didn't eat all day or all night. He was terrified because he knew what Samuel said. When this woman, woman that had a familiar spirit summoned his spirit up, 
He revealed the prop, what the Lord was going to do on the next day. So now you got that show with Raven Simone. What is it called? That's So Raven. That's So Raven, where she's portraying a psychic. And a lot of you young black girls and Latin girls, you go, oh, That's So Raven. It's such a great show. And you have your children watch that. Okay, watch this. Let's go to Acts they 16. They've got one for the Latins too now called Wizards of Waverly Place, where it's a Hispanic family. Mm, check that <laughs> out. Check that out. So now, remember we read in Isaiah where, he, where it said, who seeth us? Okay, the white man brings all these shows out and pays top dollar for the productions of these. Why? To indoctrinate your sons and your daughters into the witches' warlock covenant to get you into demonic activity. Okay, watch this, Acts 16. We want and they put the friendly title on it, the Disney Channel. Right. Because <laughs> we grew up on Disney. Right. And you know what? Now that you mentioned Disney, remember Disney put out a movie called uh, was it Fantasia? Fantasia. Or the Sorcerer's Apprentice, where Mickey Mouse plays a wizard's apprentice. He has the the, the pointed hat, right. which is the pinnacle of power, the cone of power, with the crescent moon and the pentagram on it, right. okay, which is in honor of the worship of the sun, moon, and stars, which goes back to Diana, the worship of Diana, or Sarti, okay? So now, watch this. Acts 16, we want verse 16 through 21. Okay. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. And the broom that you know, is in a movie. Right. They always got a broom, and it, re it, it represents traveling from one plane of existence to another, astral projection. Okay, that's all that's going into. So now, Acts 16, 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. A Meta. spirit of divination. Now, this damsel was a young girl. She had a spirit of divining. She could, pro she could prophesy through the left-hand side through demons. Go ahead. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. Witchcraft. Metaphor, Go ahead. Which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Which get, brought her masters much gain, meaning much money through soothsaying. Can I read your palm? Can I tell you your future? Okay. All that's dealing with this. Come on. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God. So now, how did she know Paul was a servant of the Most High God? She had the spirit of divining, the spirit of divination. She could look at you and read the spirit within you. Within you, Read that part again. These men are servants of the Most High God. That's how she was able to tell that. Which show unto us the way of salvation. Watch this. And this did she many days. But Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. So why, so why did Paul rebuke the spirit? Because Paul knew according to the laws of God that the spirit within her was not right. The spirit within her had, it was a familiar spirit. There was a demon within her giving her that power, that ability to give a word of knowledge, as you say it in church. And I said that on purpose because in church, there's always some woman that goes, I'm giving you a word of knowledge from the Lord. You got, what's that dude on TV with the dreadlocks, Bishop Jordan is his oh, name? I forgot his name. I think he got a laptop. Yeah. He goes, I'm giving you a word of knowledge. He got a feminine spirit. Yeah, yeah. I'm giving you a word of knowledge. And the Lord said, it's an evil spirit in these brothers and sisters. So that's why Paul was, Paul was able to say, come out of her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it said that familiar spirit came out of her and she no longer had that ability. Then her masters wanted to drag Paul before the uh, council and have him put to death. Okay, what verse you read down to? To 20. Read to 21. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. See? They trouble our city. Now, they didn't count, take into consideration that Paul rebuked the spirit within her in the name of the Lord of hosts. Why? Because it was against the law of God, what she was doing. Okay? They said, Oh, these, these guys troubling our city. They're Jews and they're troubling our city. Go ahead and read that again. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Roman. Right, because what does say laws are customs to observe? Because when Paul and Barnabas and Silas and the other apostles came, whatever city they went to, they taught the laws of God in the name of Christ. 
Understand that. That's why they said, read that part again. I want you to understand what this guy said. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive. Read the whole verse again. And brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. They, they trouble our city. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive. What were the customs Paul and them was teaching? The laws, the laws, the laws of God. Go ahead. Neither to observe being Roman. They said we Roman citizens. We ain't supposed to be following the Bible laws. That's, what's, that's what was going on. In the name of Christ, was that it? Um, and the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. So you see what happened to Paul and them? They were commanded to be beaten. Why? For teaching in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the laws, statutes, and commandments. From there, let's go to Acts 19. Acts 19. We're going to start at verse 13 and we're going to read down to verse 20. Because you always had Israelites who knew the law. But guess what some of them would do? They would use the law, twist the law, and deal in witchcraft, like some of you today. Watch this. Acts 19, verse 13. Acts 19, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Then certain of the vagabond Jews. Certain of the vagabond Jews. The word vagabond means what? A bum. Bum Jews, okay? Like, for example, you have certain, you find certain Israelites who will be teaching the Bible, but in their camp while they're teaching, they'll have a book of witchcraft. And if you use your hand like this, they'll circle your hand and go, see, this symbol means such and such foolishness, okay? They'll, oh, circle your hand, look what, look, this is a, a, a evil symbol, okay? Or, or look, the dude, the two fingers. Where do they learn that from? Which books on witchcraft? Because a lot of times you speak, you use your hands, you're not purposely manipulating your fingers to do certain things, but they'll make an issue of it. That is a vagabond Jew, a bum brother, a bum Jew. Listen good. Read it again. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists. They were what? Exorcists. They were dealing in witchcraft. They had witch books, witchcraft books called curious books, okay? That gave you all similar, do this symbol for that. Put your head this way, now put your elbow. <laughs> sure. Sprinkle salt and put a coconut under your bed. Foolishness, evil. Come on. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. Because there's such brothers, understand this. There are those amongst us that have evil spirits. Those spirits of cerebral palsy. Those spirits of not being able to speak. That's a deaf, dumb, evil spirit within the brother or sister. Those that are lunatic in the mind, there's an evil spirit in that brother or that sister. So these cats said, oh, we, you see a lunatic brother or lunatic sister, we can cast the spirit out. Watch what happens. Took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus saying. Now, you ever see brothers or sisters who have a spirit of murder upon them? Those brothers and sisters that are in jail because they can't help themselves, they got to murder. Not all of them, but there's some in jail who have a murderous spirit where they must put someone to death. That's an evil, demonic spirit on that brother or that sister. Come on. We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Mm. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, Sceva. A, Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. A chief of the priests which did so. Now when you examine history, what was the symbol that they used in witchcraft? When the Jews used witchcraft, okay? Like... Originally, it was called the, listen good, when Solomon went into madness, it was called the Seal of Solomon. I'm going to say it again. The Seal of Solomon was a six-pointed hexagram that the, these Jews, the sons of Sceva, and many of them today, like if you look at Israel today, okay, what's the, the, the national flag for Jewish people? It's the Seal of Solomon that they call the Magen David, or the shield of David. But there's no history showing that God gave David a hexagram as the national symbol of Israel. You won't find it, brothers and sisters. That was always a symbol of witchcraft to ward from evil. That's why the so-called white man today in Israel that claims to be a Jew but is not but lies on his flag, he has the Magen David. Okay, and you can only find that symbol of what it really breaks down 
in a, a book of witchcraft called the Kabbalah. And a book called the Kabbalah breaks down the six-pointed hexagram as a symbol of witchcraft to ward off evil. You use evil to ward off evil. So what verse you at now? 14. Come on. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. A chief and chief of the priests which did so. They were exorcists. Remember, this is a chief priest's sons. Why were they exorcists? Why were they practices, practice, practicing exorcisms? Because they were delving in the black arts. They were messing with divination, soothsaying. Come on. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. So listen to what the spirit says through this, this man. Jesus I know. And Paul I know. And I even know the one called Paul. Come on. But who are ye? But who are you? Who are ye? What does this prove? That the spirits know those sons and daughters of the Most High who are diligent in this truth. Understand it. Who have repented of their sins and are going out doing the work of the Most High God. Those evil spirits acknowledge them. That's why he said, Jesus we know, and we know Paul. But who are you? Come on. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So what happened? They tried to cast out the spirit. The spirit jumped on them, whooped the hell out of them, stripped them butt naked, and they ran out of the house naked all the way to their buttocks. Come on. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus. And all, and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks. When it says Greeks, that's those scattered Israelites that did what? Followed Greek customs. Look up the word Hellenist. Remember that. So now this was noised abroad. The sons of Sceva, what happened to them? The chief priest's sons, what happened? It was known everywhere. Come on. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And a name because of that. The name of the Lord Jesus was magnified everywhere. Come on. And many that believed came. And, and many that believed. You had many that believed who had followed the sons of Sceva. Many that believed who had followed the chief priests and his seven sons of Sceva. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. What did they confess? They confess their sins, okay? Because when they saw that witchcraft has no power, they came and confessed their sins. Come on. Many of them also which used curious arts. What does it mean they used curious arts? They used witchcraft. They used witchcraft and they celebrated holidays like you're about to celebrate. Halloween, which is a day of the devil in honor of Sam Hain. Don't forget that. Where they dressed up as goblins, ghouls, and gooks. <laughs> dressed up as superheroes. Drug dealers. Drug pimps. dealers. Pimps. Oh, I'm a prostitute today. Right, right. Okay, they did all that foolishness. What did they do? Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. They burned all their books of witchcraft. Or anything that dealt with the devil, they burned their books. They burned those books. What were they doing? They were showing everybody that they repented in the name of the Most High, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and His Father, the Most High God. They were repenting of their sins. That's what's required of you, brothers and sisters. What verse is that? 19. Come on, down to 21. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Those books... Equaled out to how much? 50,000 pieces of silver. 50,000 pieces of silver. So they paid top dollar for those books of witchcraft. They said, listen, we got to get rid of this stuff. There's no power in it. They wanted what? The Bible. They wanted this book, the Bible. They wanted to learn this. They wanted to learn their history and what was required of them. Hold that. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. Come up. And now Israel... What does the Lord thy God require of you? And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Because that's the question that we get from a lot of you. What does the Lord require of me? I believe now that I'm an Israelite. I understand that. But what must I do now? Read it again. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God? 
to walk in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. And to love him. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and, and to with serve all thy the soul. Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. You know why that, that part right there is important? Because when you hear fear the Lord, a lot of you lie at home and go, I fear the Lord. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul. You go, yeah, I do that. But no, you don't. Because the bottom part said what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. That's how you fear the Lord. That's how you love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. You do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. You keep the commandments of the Lord. Do you do that? No, you don't. But today is your day to repent. Today is your day to get your life right. Today is your day to learn what is required of you as Israelites. What, did you finish the verse? Uh, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, mm. which I command you this day for thy good. For thy what? For thy good. You're talking about you want a lucky charm. You got the rabbit's foot. You got the four-leaf clover. You foolish Israelites. If you want good in your life, the Bible said what? It says, and keep the commandments. Read that from there. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. For thy good. You understand that? Now, did you finish in Acts? Um, no, we had more in Acts. What verse you at? We were at 19. Go ahead. Um, Many of them also, which use curious arts books, brought, also brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Now, what I want to show you now is that on this stupid and evil day called Halloween, <laughs> you dress your sons and your daughters up as goblins and ghouls, witches and warlocks. Some of you try to be clever. No, I don't do that. I dress them up as a princess. What's that woman, Pocahontas? Right. I dress them up like that, okay? But listen, I want you all to understand the root of it all is evil. Because a Negro tries to be clever. A Negro in his own dilapidated mind tries to outsmart the one true God. You cannot outsmart the one true God. Because guess what? While the Druids were celebrating Sam Haynes Day or celebrating Halloween, you had the Catholic Church celebrating what? All Saints Day, which came November 1st. You had the pagans celebrating Halloween or, um, or la, uh, uh, the Day of the Dead, and you had the Catholics celebrating All Saints Day, where they did what? Dress up as saints. Dress up as Catholic bishops, and all of that you're trying to portray another spirit goes back to demonic activity. One was on October 31st, one was November 1st, and they merged it together. And today it's a national holiday called Halloween, okay? Holy Eve, when the Most High God gives you the holy days to celebrate in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Get Zephaniah 1 and 8. And you know what we're leaving out too with the dressing up? There's a huge parade in New York where the men, that's their right. day to dress up as transvestites. Hey, thank as you. Women. How can I forget that? How can I forget <laughs> that's that? That's real big in New York. Right, right. I don't know about other places. Men dress up as women and women dress up as men. Hold on, get Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Because that's the day that a lot of them try to, they want to come out of the closet right. on October 31st. I came out on October 31st. <laughs> I, I bought a dress. It was a Gucci Versace dress. And I wore these heels and you nasty, wicked Israelites. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Do you hear the law of God? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What does that mean? Cross-dressing. The woman putting on pants. And you know what? Hold that. Give me Exodus. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness. What does the word breeches mean? The word breeches means pants. Make linen pants that match with their linen garment. Come on. From the loins even unto the thigh shall they reach. From their loins down to the, their thigh, which was above the knee. That's what Aaron and his sons wore. And it wasn't just for them, because when you read in Exodus 19 and 6, it says, all Israel shall be a nation of priests. Was that it? Yeah, that's it. On that. Okay, now let's go back to the law in Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. 
The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What pertain to a man? Breeches. You call it pants today. There's no scripture where God said put breeches on a woman. There's no scripture on that. Okay? Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What do you call a man dressed as a woman? You call him a uh, transvestite, is that the word? Right, transvestite. A transvestite, or they call him trans... A cross-dresser. A cross-dresser, okay? That's what you call it. You know it ain't right. So likewise, all you men, all you feminine men, now watch this, all you brothers with a feminine spirit on you, I want you right now, you say, oh, I ain't got no feminine spirit, I'm all man, brother, all man. Okay, here's the test. Look at your woman, look at your wife. Look at your daughter right now. What is she wearing? If you allow her to dress as a man with pants on, she's out of order and you're out of order. And more than likely, you're too scared to tell her, get out of those pants and dress according to the law and put on woman's apparel, which is a skirt, which is a dress with fringes and a border of blue. How about that? Let's read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination all unto that what? All that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So every man that's dressed as a woman is an abomination. Every woman that's dressed like a man is an abomination. Now I want you to listen real good. Because you're gonna find Israelite camps sprouting up all across the country. You might, oh, that's a good thing, okay. But you're going to notice several differences amongst them. There's one main difference. Two. One, either that camp may or may not accept Christ as the king, lead him alone. Then the next difference you're going to see is does the camp keep the laws of the Most High God? The first physical thing you're going to look at visually, look at the women in the congregation. Do they have pants on? Are they dressed as men? If they do, if they are, that's a sign right there. This camp does not fear God. This camp, okay, is the men are too feminized, too scared to command these women to dress as women, okay? That's what you're going to notice, okay? So let's read that again. And the crazy thing about the pants, when I speak to the elder women, they say that this is new because they say when they were growing up as a child, it was a strange thing to see a woman in past. Exactly. That, that's a custom in the United States with the women's rights right, movement. Right? The feminist movement. The feminist exactly. one movement. Exactly. That women's right movement, which was a disguise for the lesbian movement, which came around the late 1800s, early 1900s, where women dressed like men, especially during World War II, right. where they put on pants, they put on trousers, they put on breeches. And an old, simple, knucklehead black woman goes, I want to be like the white woman. I want to be like master. Right. That's what's going on. Okay? Right. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So you hear that, right? So now, let's look. We've got that going on throughout the, the year. Then you've got the your young children on October 3rd. I'm going right back there. Get Zephaniah 1 and 8. Who dress up like Superman, Batman. You notice the name Batman, Superman. Uh, Batman, let's use Batman, Spider-Man. Uh, animals and insects. Right, animals and insects. <laughs> they give homage to creatures of the night. Okay? You got to think about that. Watch this. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. Listen good. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and kings and children and all as such are clothed with strange apparel. God said he's going to kill those who are dressed in strange apparel. The word apparel means clothing. Read it again. Read it slow. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is the second coming of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Come on. That I will punish the princes. I will punish the princes. And the kings. And the kings. And the children. Read that part again. And the children. Again. And the children. And the children. God don't care about little Tyrone. He don't care about little Raheem. He don't care about little Tracy. Dressing up like goblins and ghouls and warlocks. He gonna do what? 
and punish the children, and all such are clothed with strange apparel. You poor trick or treat, give me something good to eat. Dressed up like Batman and Spider Man, witches and warlocks, prostitutes and pimps. Okay, what the hell is going on with you? You better repent, understand, and hear and heed the words of the Most High God. From there, let's go to Second Corinthians six. Second Corinthians chapter six. We want verse sixteen to 18 okay so now you got the woman who says she repented she she says oh yeah we can't dress up little johnny like uh witches and warlocks no more okay sister that's good but do you wear men's apparel because that's strange too okay you got to come out of that so where you at second corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 come on and what agreement have the temple of god with idols and what agreement have the temple of god with idols or Halloween is an idolatrous practice. What agreement has the temple of God mean in this Bible with your celebration of idolatry? Read on. For ye are the temple of the living God. You Israelites, you black men, Latin men, Latin women, and black women, you are the temple of the living God. You are the sons and daughters of Israel. Read. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and will walk in them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall be my people. Come on. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Wait, read that part again. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Come out from the Lord, these foolish holidays in America. Come out from among them, and be ye separate. That's what the Bible says. That's what you're commanded to do. Be se separate yourself from all these foolish and evil customs here in America, and keep the laws, customs, of the Most High God. Come on. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. Saith who? Saith the Lord. Because you look at us and go, oh, that's what they say. That is just saying our word, brothers and sisters. This is not our word. We're telling you what thus saith the Lord. What verse you at? 17. Come on. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. What does that mean, touch not the unclean thing? Don't touch Halloween because it's unclean. Don't touch the trick or treat. Oh, I don't celebrate it. I just got candy there and I just give it to the children. The kids. Don't <laughs> touch it. The Bible says, don't have no participation. Oh, I didn't join in the parade. I was just on the sidelines watching. You're still a participant. Understand that. Come on. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You hear that? God says, if you touch not the unclean thing, then and only then will he receive you. Come on. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. I hope you brothers and sisters really understand that. From there, let's go to Revelation 18 and verse 4. Revelation chapter 18 and 4. Read that. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven. What verse you read? 4. Read 4 again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. God is speaking to his people. Who is his people? The 12 tribes of Israel. Where are they that he's saying, come out of her? Read up verse 2, I think it is. And he cried with a mighty strong voice saying, Babylon the great is full. He sees in the spirit Babylon being destroyed. What is the modern name for Babylon the great? The United States of America is the modern name for Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is the spiritual name God gave this country. Now verse 4. For her sins have reached unto heaven. Verse 4 again. And I, and, I have heard, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. When it says come out of her, my people, meaning come out of what? Come out of the customs and strange practices and festivals of the United States of America. Read. Come out of her, my people. And it's letting you know God's people is captive in Babylon. That's what all that's saying. Go ahead. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. Be not partakers of her sins. Halloween is a sin of America. Halloween is a sin. What does sin mean? The breaking, the transgression of God's laws. When you celebrate a festival, a celebration called Halloween, that is a sin. 
God says, come out of her and be not what? Read that part again. And be not partakers of her sins. Be not partakers of her sins. Come on. And that you receive not of her plagues. Because if you take part in the sins of America, you're going to partake in the plagues that God is sending to America. That's why a lot of your sons and daughters are on the back of milk cartons. That's why they disappear primarily when? October 31st. That's why your dogs and animals disappear because they're being sacrificed. Okay? God says, come out from amongst her, okay, that you be not partakers of her sins. Understand that, brothers and sisters. From there, jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. Read 21. 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. Because America's prophet prophesied to be destroyed through violence. Thermal nuclear activity and the second coming of Christ. Read. And shall be found no more at all. This place is going to be totally destroyed and never heard of again. Read. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpets shall be heard no more at all in thee. All the music industry from your rap to your hip hop to your gospel music going to be destroyed and never heard again. Read. And no craftsman or whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. Watch this. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Ain't gonna be no work no more. Come on. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Watch this. For thy merchants, which were great men of the earth. For thy merchants, which were the great men of the earth, meaning all the princes of, of the world, all the imams that do trade and tr trade and what's the word? Uh, stock exchange were the great uh, merchants of the world. Read that part again. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. For by what? By sorceries were all nations deceived. By the sorceries of America were all nations deceived. Read that again so they know I ain't putting words in your mouth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. You hear that? So America deals in sorcery. Understand that. This was America was established by Freemasons. All that is sorcery. We're going to go real in-depth on another episode. So you brothers and sisters, stay tuned, okay? Record these shows, okay? And for more information, visit our website, www.israelunite.org or www.youtube.com slash Nathaniel 7. We can't keep this truth going. We can't keep this truth going alone by our own brothers and sisters. We need your financial help. We need your, your donations and your free will offerings. Send them, send them in weekly, brothers and sisters. Give, make a conscious commitment, okay, that you will send X amount of monies in, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, your spirit, to send in, do so, okay? Whether it's weekly or bi-weekly or monthly. However the Lord moves you, brothers and sisters, do so. Help us to help you. So with that, brothers and sisters, we give all praises to the Most High God and His Son, Jesus the Christ, and we say shalom. Shalom, Israel.